Hi, welcome back to Management Decision Tools. So last, in the previous session, we worked through this example. Uh, we went from the question setting, the problem statement, to translate successfully to this LP model. And then we looked at uh, the uh, Excel equivalent to solve for the optimal solution, right? So it was just a, just a final form that I show you and uh, it may be a little bit hard to, to sort of uh, to understand how and why uh, we came up with the answers. So in this session, I'm going to basically show you the actual uh, way from a blank screen to this final form so that we can actually confidently use Excel to our advantage. Okay, so I'm going to minimize and show you this uh, model, the original model here. Uh, because when we work with Excel, our first level input is no longer the question statement. Instead, it is going to be this model. Now remember we say translation, right? So the translation will fully uh, absorb all the necessary coefficients and also at the same time throw away the unnecessary ones into this condensed and crystallized form that will be just pure information. Okay, so we will work uh, with this as the starting point. So uh, now that I have a blank screen, and of course you can run your Excel and follow me uh, accordingly, we have a blank screen. And let me just share with you the, the sort of uh, uh, general thinking behind. The idea is that we will, we will use one column per decision variable. Okay, so that's the main thinking behind. It's not the only way to formulate uh, uh, the linear programming model in Excel, but I think it's it's easy to understand for a start, and so let's just do that. Now, so I will allocate anything that, and all the coefficients that has got to do with x1 in column B, and everything for x2, column C. So uh, let me just select everything and uh, align it to the middle. This part not necessary, optional. This is just to um, allow me to present the numbers uh, more clearly. All right. So immediately here, I will allocate two cells and I'm going to box them up. Uh, where is my boxing? I'm going to box them up right here. Okay to show that they are reserved cells for Excel later on to deposit the optimal solution. Okay, follow. You don't have to really box them up uh, with the outline here because Excel doesn't care about it. In fact, what I do is I will also additionally color it yellow. Okay, so that I visually tell myself, don't touch those two boxes. I will, uh, Excel will override them later on. Now, the next thing is I will fill in the coefficients for the objective function all right and i think uh, it should be clear why i put 100 here because that's the coefficient for x1 and 200 will be here so uh, i'm going to put a label here again all the labels are for us to uh, read rather than for excel to understand so it's just to indicate that this cell has got uh, the objective function value. Now, um, let's just put in some temporary numbers, three and four. I have no idea whether they are even feasible. So uh, just fill in, right? Now, if the uh, number of units for x1 is three, x2 is four, then the total amount of profits should be three times 100 plus four times 200. So, just watch, don't follow first. I'll show you uh, what is the right way. By right, we want to do this. B2 times D, B3 plus C2 times C3. By right. Huh? But that is clumsy. Because if you have 20 decision variables, and that usually is quite easy to achieve, uh, attain, uh, you're going to be clicking cells like 40 times. And it's very easy for us to make a mistake. So what you should do is to embrace this function called sum product okay sum product basically means we swipe and then we put a comma and then we swipe finish 
Yeah, because what this does is the first cell of the blue box is to be producted. That means multiplied with the first cell of the red box. That's correct. That's what we want. And sum it to the product of the next, the second cells, sum it to the product of the third cells if there are, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is what we want to do. Now, further, I would also say that when we do sum product, whenever I swipe these yellow cells, the decision values, I will press an F4, just so that they have dollar signs inserted. Why do I do this? That's because I'm going to be using this metaphor, this sum product, right, with the decision values all the time, whether it's for constraints or objective function. So I might as well just lock it, right, so that when I copy and paste, it will be locked there. So if if locking and copy and pasting formula sounds really foreign to you now, just stick along with me, you will see the effects in a while, all right? So for now, if you don't copy and paste, with or without the dollar signs, it's the same. No, no change. So just verify with your calculator that this is correct, right? And also, I like to color the cell uh, orange because it's a, a cell with formula and it's a very special cell. It contains uh, the, the sort of uh, objective function value. So I'm done with objective function and I like to move on to the first constraint, right? We have 2x1 plus 3x2. Normally we'll say less than equal to the right hand side, right? But for Excel, we need an extra column called the left hand side value. Okay, the left hand side value uh, shows us the actual amount consumed for this constraint the actual amount consumed rather than the actual upper limit for resource limitations or the uh, actual minimum requirements for performance requirements. So what this means is if I'm making three units of x1, four units of x2, each unit takes up two units of materials, three units of materials, then the actual amount of materials I consume will be this sum product. So I copy and paste here. You see that? Because now it correctly correctly uh, retains the position of blue cells, blue box, but it actually shifts down the red box, which is correct, because now my coefficient has, has changed. All right. So check that 2 times 3 plus 4 times 3 is correctly 18. It represents the actual amount of materials uh, consumed. And we like this level to be less than or equal to, as per the model says, 2,000 units. Fair enough, all right. Uh, okay. All right. And uh, we can then move quickly to other constraints because we don't have to try to understand in context what it means already. We're just copying and pasting the coefficients. All right. So we can actually do this. Okay. And then change necessary uh, uh, inequalities and parameters to 60 and 720 accordingly. Now, um, because I want to keep orange to indicate the as the objective function value, I will use another color for, yeah, uh, let me change to some, some other color, uh, maybe light green. Okay, so yes, left hand side. So all the colored cells except the yellow, will contain formula. So, so I need to be careful and not touch them. All the uncolored cells will have uh, environmental coefficients. That means coming from the business problems. Now, empty cells will be automatically treated as having zero. So we can leave them as blank or we can populate them as zero. All right. Sometimes for large uh, table of coefficients, it might be cleaner visually to leave them as blank. So I'll do that now, okay? So uh, <clears throat> right now we don't have any solutions and this is not correct because it's infeasible and uh, that's just the first part, okay? So we're done with the first part of 
copying the model and implementing it in Excel. There are only two steps. <clears throat> this is the first step. 